What's up, everybody? How are you doing? So I uh, grew up in Cincinnati, and uh, when I was a teenager, we moved up to uh, rural Michigan. And our school holiday system up there was all screwed up. And they gave us the first day of hunting season off every year. <laughs> Instead of being off for Martin Luther King Day, we were off for John Deere's birthday. <laughs> I thought it was weird that we didn't have summer vacation. Then I found out we got the whole NASCAR season off. <laughs> it's pretty nice. I saw a commercial the other day for a new reality show. And they go, we've gathered contestants from the four corners of the world. You know, the earth is round, goddammit. No wonder they didn't pick me. You know, somebody at that network obviously wasn't paying attention during their 1492 history lesson. So, uh, my wife wanted a kitten for her birthday. You know, but she didn't want just any type of cat. You know, she wanted a Siamese cat. You know, so I searched and searched, and those fuckers are hard to find. You know, so I just uh, grabbed two kittens and stapled them together. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, uh, despite Texas's uh, best efforts, the death row, in, uh, death row population in America has now passed 3,300 people. You know, that's a lot of extra mouths we're paying to feed every day. And that's not cool. I can't even afford to eat three meals a day, and I've never killed anybody. <laughs> but since they're going to be shutting down Guantanamo Bay, I think we should just send the death row inmates down there, combine them with America's morbid infatuation with reality television, and create what I think would be the number one show of all time, Survivor Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> you know they could have some sweet-ass challenges. Razor wire pole vault, extreme team waterboarding. Every week, American vote to see who dies and how they die. Oh, sorry, Scott Peterson, but it looks like you got the least amount of votes to live this week. And you get to go in the lion cage. You know, it sounds harsh, but America would eat that shit up. So, you know, don't get me wrong, you know, I'm not really a violent person. I used to get my ass beat as a kid, up until the point when I could take my dad, and he just wanted to be my friend. <laughs> but being abused as a child really screwed up my perception of proper punishment. You know, as a kid, I'd get in trouble at a friend's house, pull my pants down, bend over his dad's lap. I didn't know any better. <laughs> Next thing I know, his mom's walking in the room. She has no idea what's going on. She starts crying. <laughs> talking about a divorce. <laughs> So I went out to dinner the other night, and my food was taking an exceptionally long time to come. You know, so I just asked the waitress, I was like, hey, you know, how long until you think the food's gonna be ready? And she goes, ah, oh, don't worry about it. It'll be ready in minutes. <laughs> well, no shit. That is how we keep track of time here. You know, that's as if I would have said, hey, how do you spell your name? And she went, oh, it's easy. Just use letters. <laughs> so, the homeless population worldwide is on the rise. You know, and there's certain cities who feel like this is going to start hurting their tourism. Now, I think if any place was immune to that, it would be Venice. I mean, that place is practically all water. How many homeless could there really be? You know they'd have to be some damn good swimmers. Now, I could just imagine myself paddling a boat down a waterway. Next thing I know, there's five homeless guys bobbing in the water. And what am I supposed to do? I can't turn around. I don't have any windows to put up to ignore them. I just have to charge ahead. All the while, they're trying to wash the side of my boat as I go floating by. <laughs> so, I was hanging out with a buddy of mine, and uh, he's an atheist, as am I. But he's hardcore, man. We were hanging out at his house, and he sneezed. I was like, bless you. He's like, get the fuck out. <laughs> I warned you. <laughs> they started this group called Darwin's Witnesses. Now all he does is walk around door to door trying to unsave everybody. <laughs> but you know, us atheists, we're kind of like the black sheep bastard children of the religious world. But then Scientology came around, <laughs> suddenly we don't seem so crazy. <laughs> Thanks, Tom Cruise. <laughs> so before I get out of here, uh, I just like to say, everybody gets sad once in a while, and it's okay. You know, you don't have to be happy to enjoy life. But I just think when I'm sad, how there's these people who feel like it's their mission in life to turn my frown upside down. You know, they always come up to these hackneyed phrases. Don't worry, be happy. Think positive. And the other day, a lady came up to me and goes, did you know it takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile? So I was like, yeah? Well, I was exercising. 
Maybe if you weren't so jolly all the time, you'd lose a couple pounds. I'm Charles Keyboard. Thank you very much. Charles Keyboard!